Hi, it's uh, Bob Bickle along with Johanna and Allison. Uh, and we're coming to you today to talk about not the uh, not the greatest of topics, um, uh, the impact of uh, coronavirus on uh, races and uh, and all of us in the community, uh, participants, races, timers, and uh, and everyone. Um, am I sharing my screen? Uh, no, sharing. not there. Um, sharing. Sorry. <laughs> show um, are you recording yeah. yeah i'm recording so hopefully everybody sees my uh my screen now um uh so um what i'm gonna do today is i'm gonna uh, give a little bit of an overview here and then um i'm going to talk about two topics one is chargebacks uh and the other is um uh, tools that we're trying to provide you all to help deal with this in an efficient and uh, and good as good as possible way. Um, so first off, you know, I, I got to say, um, you know, our thoughts are with everyone and to stay safe. Um, this is uh, becoming increasingly serious as uh, death tolls uh, increase, um, and uh, I'm not sure it's it's going to get better uh, very soon for us. Um, so our timeline on this. Um, so we obviously were starting to track it and so forth. Uh, we felt kind of strongly enough that it was going to impact our uh, industry uh, towards the end of February. And we put up a blog post that had a bunch of suggestions about planning for it. At that point in time, there were 60 reported cases in the US and 400 in Italy. Um, we also started doing a weekly year-over-year -year report to try to see if we could get some like advanced warning on on what's going on and and so forth. And then um, last Friday and over the weekend, it took me that long to really understand the math. I I happened to read an article uh, by a mathematician statistician in uh, the UK uh, that discussed this type of uh, this type of um, exponential uh, type of uh, virus effect. And uh, the numbers just uh, kind of blow you out of the water. Um, and you know, you've seen reports from Angela Merkel and, and others, I'm sure, because everybody's uh, reading about this. Um, you, you can believe whatever numbers you choose to believe. It's all a little bit of a mystery because everything is moving so rapidly. Y y nobody really has the numbers to, to forecast. You know, you look at what we said two weeks ago about 60 cases in the US and 400 in Italy, and now there's, you know, many more than that that are already dead in Italy. Um, so uh, our weekly year to year fl was flat, basically the first two weeks. And so what we instituted on Tuesday is starting to measure, and the year to year uh, weekly is basically we took all the races that happened and were taking registrations last year and this year, and we did a comparison of them. And we took a sample of, you know, like 150 races or so. And, um, and we, we did a measurement of the number of registrations those races did last year versus this year from Sunday through Saturday. And so it was up 3% and then it was up 0.9%. So we started, uh, I asked Lewis to start doing that report kind of daily for the week. So week to date, if you will. And so Sunday through Tuesday was down 15%. Sunday through Wednesday was down 18%. And that 18% doesn't mean 3%. It means that, you know, it's, it's actually accelerating the downward trend. Um, uh, it's very early on in terms of the chargebacks that we see, um, but they are going up. They're about 4x where they were last week, um, and, and we think that the chargebacks that we're seeing today actually happened about three weeks ago. So much like that 60 cases in the US, 400 cases in Italy, we think that that chargeback number is kind of similarly um, uh, you know, kind of underreported in terms of real time uh, measurements. Um, so I feel like it was just a few months ago that we kind of educated the industry on what is sales tax. And I feel like we're having 
like we we provide no positive education to anybody anymore um if there's something to laugh about there, there's a little little chuckle um so what's a chargeback so the credit card network exists to facilitate uh, transactions between cardholders and merchants cardholder uses a credit card to buy a good or a service from a merchant um and uh and you all are actually merchants so each one of you is a merchant and you're providing your service to the cardholder if that service is not delivered the cardholder has the right to do what's called a chargeback and uh, they're able to get their money back from you and you have a legal financial fiduciary um, obligation to pay that money back to them and that money comes out of your merchant bank account and i'll get into the details of that in, a, in, in the next slide so our normal rate of uh of chargebacks is about 20 that we see per week and we typically have about 150,000 transactions per week so the percentage of chargebacks is very very small for each one of those chargebacks we have a process where we try to fight the chargeback some of the chargebacks are legitimate um so uh we in the past have seen races canceled and uh and suddenly so because the race went bankrupt or something and uh what we see in those cases is that there's 40 to 50 percent chargeback rates on those and um and the merchant is not going to win that chargeback at all in the case where there are clear no refund policies in place uh and the service has been offered to be delivered then um then we have uh somewhat good rates on that but that is actually declining um so we used to win about 90 percent of those that's down into the 70s now and it's because visa in particular is favoring the credit card holder in terms of what their um uh, in terms of their decision making and that that process the way it works is that um a card holder issues a chargeback to um, the credit card network they call up discover or american express or they click a button on their phone to issue the chargeback um and uh there's this kind of delayed process that happens in the credit card network the credit card network is actually kind of really technolo technologically kind of behind the times in a lot of ways um there's actually some manual processes that go on in, in that uh reviews before it hits us when it hits us exact moment that it hits us and we get notified of the chargeback the money is actually pulled out of your merchant bank account and returned through the credit card network to the credit to the credit card holder um so if you look on the left hand side you see you know merchant bank account for race number one race number two race number three you know, race number one has a thousand dollar reserve. Race number two has a zero dollar reserve. Race number three has a twenty thousand dollar reserve. And so, you know, one credit card holder going against these, it's kind of not a big deal. So they take fifty bucks out of that thousand dollars. But what happens when they uh, hit a merchant bank account that's zero dollars? So we're what's called a payment facilitator. And that puts us at kind of this elevated level in the credit card network to do fancy things like we do with uh, referral reward refunds and and things like that. Um, and usually, historically, for the past 10 years, it's been a wonderful thing. Um, but with uh, with chargebacks coming out, uh, the, the chargebacks have always come out of the run sign up bank account if a race had zero dollars in reserve. And it wasn't that big of a deal because we only did 20 a week and you know we would do 20 a week and you know the money would flow out 20 a week but in the fighting process it usually takes about 60 to 90 days to get resolution on whether we get that 50 dollars back or not we would get 70 percent of those 50 dollar fees back and you know most most races had had reserves or we could fill in the reserve with future uh with future registrations um so that's how the process actually works um and hopefully that's understandable um 
and I'll, I'll, I'll go to the next slide, which says not just run sign up. So, and that slide says every payment processor does the exact same thing. So take run sign up out of here and put Stripe in there, put PayPal in there, put First Data, World Pay, Global Payments. They all are doing the same thing. What a lot of those companies do is they bundle this together. So they actually treat that as float for themselves. And with a big company like uh, Global Payments or First Data or whatever, um, those companies have so many customers and that float is usually pretty good, like I, like I said before, that uh, they're able to, to have minimal losses on that, just like Run Signup has had minimal losses in, in the past. Um, but what happens in a credit crisis, um, you've got basically a, a, a constriction of capital um, with everybody wanting their money. And so everybody's trying to come after the dollars that uh, the credit card network favors giving back to the cardholder if a race is canceled or postponed, uh, for example. Um, and what's happening uh, to the credit card network and, and these, all these processing companies is that uh, event companies, cruise line companies, airplane companies, all of those you're seeing Airbnb, you know, Marriott, et cetera. Um, you're seeing uh, all of those entities um, being hit in this type of in this type of manner. And what they all do is they start to do holdbacks and create reserves to uh, cover the the potential losses. So, um, so every payment processor is in this. Um, we took uh, a few arrows uh, on on uh, Facebook and in email and in our discussions with customers uh, the early part of this week when we made our announcement. Uh, but uh, others are following quickly. I know two registration companies that will be announcing within the next day or two are going to be doing it. And you're seeing uh, Eventbrite delaying their payments. They actually always, you know, uh, their normal process was not to pay events until after the event happened. Um, Airbnb is is doing stuff. You're seeing, um, you, 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 if you've traveled at all, you're seeing every travel, uh, every travel, uh, you know, service that you use, whether it's American Airlines or Delta or United or Hilton or Marriott, is sending you emails to say, hey, we'll we'll. We'll transfer your, uh, no worries about the coronavirus, we're going to transfer your reservation free of charge and all that kind of stuff. And the reason you're getting all those emails is precisely because of this. They're trying to prevent chargebacks from happening um, and, uh, and, and that, that, that has bad consequences. I will make a note that um, this has happened in different ways historically, right? where um, different vendors, and, and it happens in our industry, different vendors pool the money, so they don't keep it separated out like this, like what we do. Um, they pool the money, and, um, and that's, uh, uh, sometimes they wind up with cash flow issues, and so they are borrowing from Peter to pay Paul, and you'll also see them uh, accommodate for this by slowing down their payments. Um, Eric is asking if, if I, if I'm doing okay, <laughs> he's clearly, not he's the clearly <laughs> not listening to my webinar. No, I'm not doing okay, Eric. My goodness. Um, so here are the numbers. Um, so the races that are on our platform in April and May, we have paid them over $40 million. Um, that entire $40 million is pretty much at risk, you know, with things like the state of Ohio closing down all races that are over 100 participants as, as just one example of many that are spreading like wildfire. Um, there is less than $2 million in reserve. If we manage things well, now that might uh, work work out okay. Um, uh, somebody text Eric to stop texting me. <laughs> I will. Okay, thanks. Um, but the issue is that $2 million is split between 10,000 plus races. Um, and there can be many individual failures, and those individual failures come out of the run sign up bank account. 
and um, and the run sign up bank account does not have forty million dollars in it. Um, so uh, so what did we do to try to to try to address this issue? So starting this past Tuesday, now my my other daughter is bothering me. Um, text her yeah, not to text bother Molly, me. Huh? Yeah. Can you just cancel them? <laughs> I have no idea how to cancel them. Um, but starting uh, Tuesday, we began trying to get each race uh, up to a 20% reserve ratio. The reason we picked the 20% reserve ratio is that those canceled races that um, that we uh, that we've seen in the past have a 40 to 50 percent uh, chargeback, and so we are hoping that half of that would be would accommodate this. So in week one, we tried to be um, somewhat gentle in uh, in putting this in place. And so if a race had been paid ten thousand dollars, say, and uh, that meant that we wanted to put in in place a two thousand dollar reserve. And say they had gotten a thousand dollars since the the last time they had been paid by us. Um, we split that thousand dollars, five hundred dollars each way, and um, uh, so we we didn't you know maximize the reserve. The problem that we all have now is that there's not enough registrations to fill those reserves. So on a normal day, it runs sign up in March. We'll process about a million dollars in transactions. Um, my expectation, and again, you know, I've been accused of being a little bit of a chicken little on this, um, but I don't think it's unreasonable. I believe that our transaction volume next week on at this time will be maybe a hundred thousand dollars a day. So what that means is that there's just not enough revenue coming in to fill the reserves, and the customers that uh, kind of chewed me out uh, a couple of days ago thinking that they would continue to get registration uh, revenue are going to be in the they're going to be in the problem anyway. So um, what can we do? Um, I don't think that there's a lot that we can do about increasing uh, registrations right now, to be honest. I think that all of us have to uh, move to a mode where we're trying to minimize the chargebacks. Um, and the best way to do this is to communicate and to normalize the process. I would not, I would suggest not educating customers about chargebacks. <laughs> Hopefully few people uh, figure that out. Um, and we all know it's a risk now. Um, but what I would do is to try to make this uh, make this normal. So to try to facilitate that somewhat, we've come out with a postponement tool. And I'm going to be doing a demo of that. Uh, I'm going to be doing a demo of that now. Um, before I do that, let me show you what the postponement tool kind of does. So here's here's my turkey trot, and I used it as a, as an example here. So a pop up comes the first time somebody comes to the website, they'll see this pop up come up, and we give options. Um, so there's four different options. Each one of these options is kind of the default one, but you can change them to be anything you want to be, and I'll talk that, about that a little bit more. But if I say stay in race and hit continue, it will give me the option to, and I'm not logged in, it will give me the option to email that, and I'll, it'll save that email. If I'm logged in, it will actually, I'll be able to click on my name and say, you know, I want to stay in the race. Um, uh, after the first time, the uh, the pop up doesn't doesn't reappear for a period of time, and then it just goes on your front race uh, page. The other thing you'll note up here is that um, we automatically do a strike through on all of your dates. So wherever there's a date and run sign up, you'll see a strike through, and then whatever the new date is. And if you don't have a date, you can put TBD or something like that. Um, the tool is really flexible. Uh, Brandon um, Huff uh, just implemented it for his race. Allison just got off the phone with him. Allison, why don't you tell us Brandon's story? Yeah, Brandon's race just got canceled. The governor of Ohio just announced that they are putting a ban on all events over 100 people. 
Um, so he immediately, as soon as we he heard that news and we released this tool, put up a note to anyone visiting the website. Um, on, on the other, uh, he's also drafting an email right now to send out to all of his participants, and he's been communicating very openly and clearly with them um, throughout this whole uncertain period. So his participants are very aware of the struggle and the uncertainty of whether the event is um, going to happen or not. Um, so what Brandon's going to be doing is um, he's going to be allowing people to, of course, you know, participate virtually. Um, he's working with the local running store to allow all the participants to come and pick up their packets throughout the week. And he's also going to be giving um, all of this year's participants a 50% um, discount for next year's event. And he's communicated very clearly with them and letting them know, you know, he's a small business. He doesn't have the ability to, you know, issue everyone a full refund and give them all a full free entry for next year. Um, I think just that combination of clear communication, flexible options, and then always, of course, a contact number for those people who do have special circumstances and, you know, need to talk to somebody or need to desperately request a refund. Um, so always putting that contact information very clear and upfront. Um, but you'll see on this postponement tool, they immediately purposed it to communicate the message about the cancellation. Um, so it's used in a slightly different way than what you see on the, the turkey trot. Um, yeah, but, so this tool is yeah. flexible. So the turkey trot gave four different options and he's not giving any options. He's just using it for communication messaging. purposes. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks Allison and, and good luck, Brandon. Um, let me uh, go to the tool itself. Um, so I kind of ran through how it how it works. Um, if I'm logged in and I and I and I pick one of these things um, and hit continue, it actually shows me my registrations and I have Allison and myself here to to, to you know kind of do for a demo. And you can see that we've already picked our uh, decision of stay in race and Allison switching to the virtual race. Um, so, uh, so that's how th that's how that looks to the to the runner. Uh, in the race dashboard, there's this new menu item here under race, which is cancel or postpone the race. Um, it also works if you type postpone or cancel into the menu search. Um, there's three different uh, buttons here. So you can set up, you can get a uh, participant decision report, and then you can get the email report. So where people aren't logged in or you don't know exactly who they are and they just enter it in their email, like I showed you on that uh, first example, the report will uh, that report will show you those people. So in the cancel or postpone race, you've got three main options. The race, and, and actually each one of these options doesn't do a lot. It doesn't take a lot of action. So you can kind of massage this to be however you want it to be. So you, there's a postponement, a change to a virtual, and the race was canceled. Um, and so uh, on the postponement date, you can really enter anything you want. If you enter a real date in here, it will show as a real date. If it enters in TBD, which I assume is gonna be the most of, of you, unless you're basically kind of postponing until next year, you're basically not gonna hold the event this year because there's just too many logistics and too much uncertainty about rescheduling it in the fall. Um, and then let your participants know about your race. So this red, race web page headline and text is the stuff that you see on the headline our race event has been postponed and this is the text that it appears here as it appears here um and then down below you've got these different options right and when it first comes to you you'll see that all of these options are turned off and there's kind of a short description of what is meant by each one of these um, and the first one is basically stay in the race. Um, and we've entered in some default text, but you should feel free to make this custom to whatever you want. Um, the second one is uh, switching to a virtual race. Um, the third one is uh, keeping my registration fee. 
This is uh, potentially particularly interesting to nonprofits where you could make this statement even stronger, which is something like turn your registration fee into a donation. Um, and then uh, the final one is uh, get a refund. And um, so if you choose this one and you don't have to, um, then that will uh, kind of send the person through um, uh, they they actually don't go through the refund tool. What you'll have to do is use the report um, to actually use the bulk refund tool, which is more convenient for the customer. It's kind of easier for the customer to do and understand and everything. And also gives you <clears throat> a little bit more visibility and control over things. So, um, so those are the options on that. If I go back to um, this page, I can look at the participant decision report. So this will show me everybody who's kind of picked one of those options. And it gives me all of the contact info and it also gives me their decision and when they made their decision. Um, you know, stay in the race and switch to a virtual race. And I can download that into a spreadsheet and then re-upload that into our free email marketing tool and then communicate with those customers, uh, whatever is, is appropriate. Um, participant lookup by email, I don't have any of those in this race, but it, um, I think I've got a race here. Basically, it shows the time that they, uh, that they, they entered their email, and it shows their, their IP address, where they came from, and then if we can match that email to registrations, we can know how many registrations they had. So if they didn't follow through on the on the completion of you know filling and checking a box and picking a, a choice, you at least know how many registrations that person represents if they use the same email as they had before. Um, so so that's the tool. We hope that it, it's uh, helpful to you. Uh, we're going to continue to iterate on this, and we're going to. Um, uh, take input that we get from all of our customers to try to make it better. Um, and we're also going to uh, create an email version of this tool, hopefully tomorrow, that will create some uh, automation and make it easier for you to just reach out automatically to all of your customers with that same type of messaging, the same types of uh, click-through types, uh, types of interactions to make it easy, to make it seem normal, to make it seem like this is the thing that they should do. Um, I, one of the interesting things about Run Sign Up that I feel pretty good about is if you want to go beyond the postponement tool, um, you know, we just have a really good platform for that. Um, we've got cover pages where you can customize a message and basically create your own pop-up cover, you know, uh, messaging on this. We've got free email. We've got participant management tools that are extraordinarily uh, extensive. And we also have true virtual race tools. Um, I, so, uh, so hopefully we've got a pretty good toolbox for you. Um, some of those options can be complex, but if you have a large race, you may want to have that level of, of uh, control over what you're doing and how you're doing it. Um, and to help with that, we have a, uh, a coronavirus um, uh, web page for you. So it's as simple as um, runsignup.com slash coronavirus. So uh, the team has been working really hard on this. And, um, you know, we're, we put links here to all of the uh, important blogs. Um, and then we've also put a bunch of, of uh, ideas in here. So create your action plan. So we've got a bunch of different description of the typical types of options that you have. Um, participant communication, we've got some sample text that you can, you can send out. We've got uh, sample ways of creating like a sample fact page and, and things like that. Um, we've got race cancellation and postponement options. So we've got extensive deferral uh, capabilities in the, in the product, and you can make use of these, and there's a nice big um, uh, blog on all of that. Um, we explain refund options to you. 
Uh, we explain race transfers to you. We uh, talk about how you can set up a virtual type of uh, type of option, and we have both simple virtual types of mechanisms and very advanced types of mechanisms. Um, and we've got documentation, all that. And then here's the explanation of keep my donation fee um, and some of the te some sample text that can can start you off uh, on your on this uh, on this journey. Um, so that's what we've got put together for you today. Um, over the coming days, um, we kind of I, I feel like we're kind of a little bit of a central repository for information and ideas. And so you'll see this um, this website actually built out with uh, some best practices and ideas, and we'll continue to refine this. Uh, so we 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 try to try to get the messaging out. Um, we'll probably do pretty frequent emails to everybody about what's going on. We'll do lots of blog posts to try to keep people up to date, and again, just share ideas and share in this uh, in this in this uh, together. Um, and you know that's kind of kind of my final slide, and it's kind of a term that we've used here for a long, long time. Um, that we are in this together, um, and you know we we really thank you for your support and understanding and help on all this. And you know it's at times like this that you know we just kind of need each other and need to work together and collaborate. So with that long uh, intro, Johanna, do we have questions? Yeah, I got a couple. <laughs> um... Can you just kind of cover quickly how to use the tool for an event that is uh, not canceled um, to use it as messaging? Yeah. Brandon's example. It's, yeah. it's Brandon's example. And I'll go into my uh, turkey trot um, uh, race. Um, so what I would do basically is just kind of turn each one of these off. Um, if I turn them all off, you see how they're none of them are checked here and i save the settings um hopefully this works uh <laughs> you just want to change your content the headings and stuff oh yeah i did i i didn't change anyway you can customize that yeah if you customize this and then you uh you you kind of change those change these down here as well i kind of set it up and i should have i, I should have tested this earlier but Basically, you should be able to clear that out, and then it will appear more like uh, Brandon's example. I think it's here. also worth saying that even if your event is still going to happen because you haven't gotten your permits pulled or whatever, um, I think it's a best practice to offer your participants flexibility with deferral options um, or keep my registration fee or virtual options at this point because it's it's a personal choice. People don't necessarily want to go to an event. And so to prevent those chargebacks that are going to hurt all of us, um, just being clear and giving people flexibility, I think is really important right now. Yeah. So does registration stay open while the tool is active? Um, registration actually does stay open um, unless you click on this uh, cancel uh, uh, button over here. And so if you are using this to add a virtual option, um, people will be able to either move to the virtual option or you can leave registration open for the new virtual option. Yeah, so you could create a, a you could create a real virtual option event. Um, clicking virtual option in the postponement tool does not move the person because there's too many complexities in uh, doing that because everybody sets their races up differently. Um, so uh, so we can't automate that easily. But what you would do then is go run that go run that little uh, report that we looked at here, and download the CSV. Take all the people in the virtual race and uh, and do a transfer. And there is documentation on transfers in that uh, coronavirus runsignup.com/coronavirus website. And then um, it, currently, and then also in the future, if you activate the postponement tool, uh, is an email automatically sent to participants. Yes. Yeah, so what we're working on to, to 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 work on for tomorrow, hopefully we release it tomorrow, is basically that tool that 
you'll go in and, and you'll click a button somewhere. I'm not sure where we're going to put it, but you'll click a button somewhere that says, okay, send this notification to all of my participants. And you'll probably see like a pop-up with uh, a final edit for you. And then you'll hit send and it will, it will send out. Uh, slightly different topic. Um, what is the preferred method of refunds? Um, is it per, is it better to do it through Run Signup or use your own methods like checks or Venmo? Um, uh, Run Signup is actually the preferred uh, method, and the reason for that, and I should actually uh, uh, show you. Um, my uh, my screen looks a little bit different than your screen, so you can add money to your uh, to your reserve. Um, and you can add it with a credit card or you can um, get in contact with us and we will um, we'll do the wire transfer thing uh, with you. Um, and so, 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 we're, um, so you can do it that way. And the reason to do it that way is that there's a better audit trail that if that person gets a refund, they may still do a chargeback. If you send them a check, they may still do a chargeback, and then you have no audit trail for any of that, and it would be impossible for us to fight the fight the chargeback for you. And so you'll suffer both the refund cost, the the cost to um, to refund them via the chargeback, and then chargebacks. I forgot to to say uh, have a seven dollar and fifty cent um, charge. So every time somebody does a chargeback, it not only costs you your 50 buck race fee, it costs an extra $7.50. And so if you're looking to do refunds through Run Sign Up and you don't have reserves, um, how do you get money to the reserve? So um, come in to the race menu and type in reserve and you'll go to our refund reserve page. Um, on that refund reserve page, you'll see this add money via credit card. And you'll be able to click this button, and you'll be able to add, uh, you know, a thousand dollars to uh, to it with a credit card, and then you'll just uh, do the credit card. Um, we are going to be, uh, uh, and you can also send an email to finance at runsignup.com, and you can do wire transfers, um, or you can send an email to finance at runsignup.com and let us know you're sending a check. When you send a check or you do the wire transfer, make sure you note what race it is for. And the easiest thing to do is to let us know what the race ID is um, so that we can apply it to the proper race and, and, and do things and appropriately. We'll include the address of where you can send um, refund checks and wire transfers in the follow-up email to make sure that's accessible to everyone. Um, and that's also going to be on the... Um, yeah, there's there's actually a frequently asked question, and the bottom, the very bottom of that um, of that uh, of that question gives you detailed explanation of how to do it and how to find it and screenshots and things like that. Refund reserve. I got Facebook lately. Um, <laughs> so if you have a race that is not opening, uh, or the registration is just opening, magically work with that 20% being taken out because if you had zero dollars then you took in a thousand I no, not at all. Um, hope another. Uh, 
that $750 charge with a charge back, it's just extra hassle and cost at the yeah. end of the day. Yeah. Right. I think we have a number of questions on virtual events set, uh, set up. Um, I think if you want to go through the very basics, um, I would recommend starting with the coronavirus website. There are two how-tos there. Um, and if yeah, and um, I think what we should do, Johanna, is actually have separate yeah. um, webinar on this maybe tomorrow. Yeah. So, so we'll make sure we include a link um, in the follow-up email to this to those two uh, setups so that you guys can take a look at them yourselves and then we'll get something else in the books for more questions specifically about virtual events because that's going to be its own whole own topic. Um, and anyone who has answered, asked an actual question about that will follow up with you after this as well. And I think that's it for right now. All right. Um... Thanks, uh, thanks everybody for attending, and um, uh, we'll get through this 